Maroon, where local residents are accusing the government of negligence over a deadly landslide earlier this month, causing several casualties. At least 30 people were killed in the landslide, which were caused by heavy rains in the capital Yaounde. The improvised community of Mbankalo was most affected. And let's have more details of that in this report. A week after a landslide caused deaths of dozens of people in the Mbankolo district of Cameroon's capital Yaounde, local residents are picking up the pieces of what remain of their memories of their once bustling neighborhood. As they try to make sense of what just happened, they have begun to point an accusing finger at their government. They blame the authorities for not maintaining an artificial lake built a hundred years ago during the colonial era to supply the area with water. The walls of the lake collapsed due to heavy rains and flooding, sparking the deadly landslide. This lake was built by the Germans. There are pipes that passed in front of my house. It was this lake that supplied the whole city of Yaoundé. I'm telling you, my children, what I saw that day was something I had never seen before in my life. When I arrived at the scene, and I was told that there was a house here a few minutes ago. I didn't believe it. The distance was such that I could not find either the houses or the occupants. Aussi. We called the Gendarmerie, the police station. They found us here. We went around and we collected the bodies. Chelen Gerard, who arrived here in 2021, and his family survived due to the stability of his house. However, he and his family cannot stay there. Instead, they've been asked to move to a temporary camp given to them by the government until they find an alternative place. What I saw was a disaster. I was told that the wall, which served as a dike for the artificial lake built by the Germans in colonial times, that this stone wall had broken and that the waters had risen out of their banks and ravaged the whole population, as you can see here. My wife also told me that a large part of the water entered this house and immediately came back out. And that's why my family's lives were saved. Meanwhile, the government has been absolving itself of blame. It says people were not supposed to be living in such areas, but it's trying to help those affected where possible. When you go and build a house in a swampy area, your life is in danger and you put the lives of other people, including the members of your family, at risk. So the message today is that people should not build in the risk zone because these are clearly identified areas. So the head of state has asked us to come and encourage these 37 families who have willfully <coughs> left the risk zone of Mbankolo to go and settle in another place. I was never notified of any eviction, but the Red Cross was written under the house afterwards, asking us to vacate within 24 hours. For urbanism specialist Ives Anya, it was disaster which could and should have been prevented. It's an area that's been classified as uninhabitable by the state, but unfortunately has been occupied by people who didn't want to comply with the regulations. So all that happened was a failure to comply with the regulations which caused the damage. It's true that the lake dam collapsed, which led to all these losses, but that's primarily due to a failure to comply with the regulations. The numerous rains, the increased flow and the various exits and evacuations that were planned and that have been blocked. It is normal that the pressure led us to a rupture of this wall, which was nevertheless well realized for its time. In the aftermath of the disaster, individuals and bloggers organized themselves on the site and have been donating food staff to help affected families. Wanja Mungai, CGTN.